Christmas to the new 80s revolution fans and followers. We are here live on tape for our second Christmas episode. Christmas with the new 80s revolution, a Christmas revolution. That's right. Part two. Part two. So, tonight, here. Look, what's happened to my room? Where are we, Mr. Siever? Uh, we are at Casa de Sievage. Uh We are in my living room right now. Uh, <laughs> we thought we would, uh, you know, give you a, a nice Christmas f flavor, a feel, and ambiance uh, for this second part. And it's, you know, it's a little different from our normal show. Uh, we're going to do a couple of different things. Uh, yeah, and if any know. house has the flavor of Christmas, it's this one. This house is bleeding Christmas. So what a more proper place to be yeah. to recap Christmas 2017, yeah. to close out the year of the new 80s revolution, mm -hmm. our, our debut year. What a better place to talk about what's coming for the future of this channel. And uh, I think tonight we're going to show the we're gonna we're gonna bring these guys into our living rooms just a few days ago so that they can see the, into the private lives of the new 80s revolution you will get to see clips of our family christmas morning that's right folks we're doing that special for you guys you followers you 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 loyal fans who who want to <laughs> peek even deeper into the lives of the two 40-year-old somethings that you're, that you're watching on, on your screen. Well, and this will prove to them that we have lives. <laughs> yeah. That we're not just creepy toy collectors. We can be both. Huh? We can be both. We can have lives and still love what we do. So, do you know what else we're going to do, Jason? We're going to eat some of this. We're going to eat these fine little Smokies <laughs> Christmas vittles. We got these crackers and mm, cheese, a mm, staple mm. of every uh, Christmas. Uh, mm. Anyway, we're also going to give them a look at our hall, our Christmas hall. Ooh, did we get some stuff for Christmas? Oh, we got some stuff for Christmas. Some goodies. We might have gotten a few 80s related items for Christmas that yeah. we're going to show all of you tonight. Was Santa good to the New 80s Revolution? <laughs> You will find out tonight. You will also hear, you know, when we did the first episode, obviously we talked about a lot of Christmas-related memories, but tonight we're really just going to focus in on just a couple of just really important Christmas Eve slash Christmas Day memories. Uh, maybe talk about some of our favorite Christmases. Um, we already talked about favorite gifts, but, you know, we didn't really get into the traditions that, yeah. that we did uh, as, part, you know, as part of our youth with our families, so... You're going to hear a little bit about that tonight as well. Then we're going to talk about where... The yeah, the future. Where is the new 80s revolution going? <laughs> well, yeah. Are we wrapping it up? Are we done? <laughs> of course not. We're just beginning. We just getting started, folks. Just getting started. And so we're going to give you guys a rundown of what to expect in the new year, in 2018. Yes, I'll do the talking while you chew. Mm. In the new year with the new 80s revolution and it includes something very very exciting something that i have been excited about since we first connected got together i'm gonna give it to him now i'm gonna give it to him now one thing that you guys can look forward to in 2018 is this face and this face in cartoon form on a t-shirt that's right that will be available to you. That's right, the new 80s revolution is being put into cartoon form and we are gonna plaster our faces all over everything you could possibly think of. For lots of stuff, lots of cool, cool items. And make it available to you guys. That's right. We're gonna have merch, is what the kids are calling it these days. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have merch. Yeah. I am so excited to wear my own t-shirt. Can't wait. So that's just a little, little sneak peek into what's coming up. But before that, to pay for all these Christmas presents. To pay for this fire. To pay for this fire. <laughs> the kindling. We gotta pay some bills. That's right. So while we do that, you guys check out these commercials and we will be right back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I love Smurf Berry Crunch cereal so much, I smurfed a machine to double production. Smurf Berry Crunch is fun to eat. A smurfy, fruity breakfast treat. Made by Smurf so happily, it tastes like crunchy Smurf Berries. Berry shake and crispy, chewy, very, very smurfy. Oh! Oh, no! What's smurfing on? Candy made us work faster. I hate faster. Ooh, what'll we do with all this delicious Smurf Berry Crunch? Eat it, of course! <laughs> Smurf Berry Crunch, a very smurfy part of this nutritious breakfast. Like that's a monster movie! Oh no. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! You're scaring me, Harold! There's really nothing to be scared of. You see, the dark is scary because we can't see as well. Darkness by itself, eh, it's no big thing. When you can't see, it makes you afraid. But as long as you're in a safe place, like your own house or your own room, there's nothing to be afraid of. Ah. Tell me, are you really scared? Oh, Harold, you're scarier with the lights on. And that's one to grow on. Oh, every time, Jason, every time. You, uh, you know. These, these things. Yeah, I, I, you know, every time. Because, I mean, I, occasionally I go back and watch our videos. I, I, I assume you do as well. Oh, I definitely do. I love our faces. I do love our faces. <laughs> and I just really, those commercials, it's like, it's almost like we choose them. <laughs> specifically for this episode. It's, I know, it's just right? so coincidental. So we hope you enjoyed those. We are back. We are still enjoying some some bits of cheese, some some crackers. I got myself a new beverage. And uh, don't forget these little smokies. Little smokies. They taste a little cheesy. You got some cheese in there? <laughs> no cheese. No. It tastes Straight up just a little cheddary. Mm. How was your Christmas? My Christmas was pretty darn good. Darn tootin'? Darn tootin'. Santa was good to me, Santa was good to the wife, and Santa was very good mm. to the kid, to mm -hmm. the boy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I will, uh, I will second that. Uh, uh, Santa was very good to me, as you guys will see tonight. Uh, my children... Uh, had an absolute blast, and you'll see some of that footage later on. Um, I mean, we can talk about uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about our Christmas Eve uh, memories and rituals a little bit. But what about what about modern Christmas Eve feelings? I mean, your boy is ten. Yeah. I got a five-year-old and a and an almost two-year-old. Man, you get, you're but you're still in that sweet zone. I'm in a very sweet zone. <laughs> very sweet zone. Um, Mike, I mean, maybe you'll, I, I don't know if we got footage of it, but, you know, my kid, he, uh, we had to put out, because he wanted to feed Rudolph, but my kid is so freaking sweet that he wanted to feed Rudolph, Rudolph's mother, Rudolph's father, and then he said just one of the other reindeers, you know, whoever was hungry. Now, Rudolph's mother and father have never come into play in any Christmas story I've ever heard of. But my kid, well, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the, the Rankin and Bass special that your kid is afraid of. My kid's terrified of the When he gets older, Rankin. he'll love it. And he'll be like, ah, see? That's Rudolph's why I found <laughs> his parents. So I had to put out four apples, four large carrots, four bowls of oats, and four glasses of milk. I mean, there was a there was a smorgasbord. There was a buffet <laughs> on my kitchen floor. We had to put it on the kitchen floor, of course, because reindeers aren't going to jump up on the counter to eat. So we put it on the kitchen floor. The reindeers obviously had a feast. Santa had a feast. My kid wakes up. Does he run to the toys first? No. He runs to the kitchen to make sure the food is gone. Yeah, Sweet awesome. boy. I mean, we still do the, you know, we put up the, the, the cookies and Coke. Oh, we don't put up milk. We put up Coke. 
Well, there is that commercial where Santa's enjoying the cocoa. Yes, and since River was little, he's he's kind of seen that, and, <laughs> and we've kind of made it apparent that, hey man, Santa loves his coke, uh, so he's always like, you gotta have that coke, Dad. <laughs> Make sure we have that coke. So we put out a couple cookies, coke, always gone. Well, of course. Sir. Always gone in the morning. Why? Well, of course. That's why he stays so big and jolly, folks. He is a big jolly guy. Yeah. And he was definitely, uh, he definitely made an impact in my home and yours this Christmas. Uh, but that's more, that's modern. That's modern stuff. Uh, yeah, but I, I feel like, you know, you, you try to grab those things, the traditions that you had when you were younger, and, and carry them into absolutely. your adult life. I certainly did, even before I had a kid. This is really um, cool. Yeah, I love it. I, I try to keep the well again it does, i mean i don't try hard because i love christmas we've talked about it christmas is my favorite holiday of all time and uh i definitely try to keep every every tradition alive as much as i can um you know certain things we'll talk about but certain things uh it just isn't possible anymore for the things that i used to do um, Ritual-wise, uh, on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning and whatnot, but um, I try to still keep it fun and and happy and, and uh, generally. And, and you know what? I gotta tell you though, I don't know if we did talk about it the last episode. Do or tell me. Just in general. Do but tell. I'll enjoy a smoky. I uh, I've been kind of a grump the last few Christmases. I do end up getting out of it, but I do get a little grinchy because. Where we live in upstate slash western New York, <laughs> um, the weather is very fickle, mm -hmm. and certainly the last five years have been very mm -hmm. just weird. Yeah. Um, and I would say, and actually I wouldn't say, I would know because I keep record because I take pictures every year, but in the last five years, we've had three really gross Christmases, as far as the weather is concerned. Green, brown, yeah. wet, yeah. slushy, muddy. just muddy, gross, nothing, no white, no white Christmas. And then this year, hammered. Oh my gosh. Hammered. In fact, I texted you, <laughs> like, either Christmas Eve or the day before, and I said, are you loving this? Because oh, yeah. we got hammered a actually, with some snow and some cold. It's funny, everybody did. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was like, Chris, you got your white Christmas. Well, everybody out there thinks Western New York, and they're like, oh, you guys get hammered with snow. We do, but January, February, yes. or March. <laughs> yeah. And we have, like, sometimes spring weather in December, yeah, it, which is really frustrating. It can... It can bum you out, and it's been bumming me out, you know? And, and it's so much so where I told my wife, I was like, listen, we're going to go away uh, next Christmas. Like, we're going to go somewhere where we know there's going to be snow all through December. Mm -hmm. uh, do a lodge thing. We're going to have people come. Wow. And, and do a Christmas, like a second Christmas, you know? Because I really love, the, it, it helps bring the whole feel and atmosphere of Christmas together. If it's cold outside. You look outside and you see spring it's it's just kind of like eh. no eh. that's why i could never understand like christmas in california oh, or christmas you know people parts. who always leave you know yeah I, I i'm going to florida i don't you know. get that yeah. so that's today's christmas eve uh let's let's talk about our christmas eves of the past mm -hmm. um in fact we got a couple interesting comments um one facebook comment from uh two vlogs more uh, my friend christopher uh, Speaking of Chris, yes. Hello, Chris. Thank yes. you so much. He talks to me quite often now on Facebook. Well, and we converse it, all the time. And this, they are just wonderful people. I kind of, I, I don't do Facebook. I don't have a Facebook. Account. I mean, I have one, but it's always deactivated, and I don't have any pictures or I don't have any friends. I would like to get on this Facebook thing because I can see it and I can read, you know, I see Christopher from Two Vlogs More going back and forth with you. I see Chase Party on there all the time. I see you got to get on there, bro. I see a couple of other people, so I got to get on there and I got to leave some comments That's right. on this uh, on this Facebook thing. But, yeah, so I, Christopher uh, Cummings, Two Vlogs More, has said to us, he left a really great comment the other day. Um, 
he mentioned, you know, the fun and the nostalgia, but he also mentioned some emotion, you know, sometimes picking up some emotion from us. A guy, a cool dude on, uh, on YouTube called Big Beefcake Gaming left me, left us a comment that said, you know, I legitimately teared up. And you know what? Yeah, I, I believe him. I, yeah. And so when we, when we read stuff like that, that, that really hits home. Two vlogs more, I don't know if you have been able to see it, but they did a, a vlogmas. They oh, call, I, they're I calling watched it. every one. I have watched every one of your Vlogmas episodes, guys. Let me tell you, I left you a comment that said I literally fell asleep to one of your Vlogmas <laughs> because it is so... I, we're kind of... Obs we're, it's, what's, I, what's great about it, and I think one of the reasons why... I can't we, even tell you. Why our talk. show is so, so awesome. Obviously. If I can toot our own horn. Obviously. Um, is that we're just genuinely good, real human beings and we're letting you into our lives and you are letting us into yours and what's great about those guys is that you literally feel like you're hanging out or on that adventure with them you're you're hanging out during the day with these guys <laughs> and seeing they're like you're just going along with them and I, and I hope that you get that same feeling you you know you you're basically it's almost like you guys are sitting right there in front of us yeah and we're all just kind of <laughs> and to be honest with you someday I hope to be sitting I, right in front of I them. I think we will I think it'll happen because they are just two cool people I I love your relationship I love your the the facts that you guys share so much in common that you're just easygoing people that you just have fun so I love watching your stuff I watched all the vlogmas episodes I love them. I'm stealing some of your cooking ideas. <laughs> I made the cabbage and the onions and the mushrooms that you guys made. The Brussels sprouts, the roast pork you made look fantastic. So we love two vlogs more. They are great. Two vloggers more. I'm sorry, I kept saying two vlogs. But two vloggers more, Christopher and his wife. Um, just absolutely fantastic people. So anyway, when you leave, when you leave comments like that, we, it, it hits home for us. Cockles, warms the cockles, as Christopher would say. And... Uh, it, it it gives me the the not that I don't have the motivation to do this, but it gives me can, the, well, just a heavy yeah, it's, drive it's, to it's do inspiration, this. It's inspiration. It's it's motivation. It's you know it's it's a it's it's a it's a validation. You know, like that's it. That's the word. Validation. What we're doing is worth it to to people out mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. that's great. It's a great feeling. So thank you very much. Yes. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> I wasn't on here. I know. <laughs> not on the, it's not on the agenda. Um, yeah, so, cool. Um, Christmas Eve. Want to go first? Uh, do you got anything on deck, or do you want me to... I, I mean, mean, you in, know... In your brain chamber. You, I, got, I got one in the chamber. I mean, if you want to rock it, <laughs> rock it. If Fire have, it. If I have too much of this cheese, I'll really have one in the chamber. <laughs> um, you won't. It'll be clogged, man. <laughs> man, oh, man. Just, so, I'll talk about some traditions. Um, Christmas, Christmas morning is obviously the top of the pyramid. But in my family, Christmas Eve was when it all happened, was when all the magic happened. Um, me, my sisters, uh, my mother, we would uh, get started on Christmas Eve at about uh, 4 p.m., we would all go to my grandmother's, my grandma and my grandpa's house. And that was always a special place for us to be anyway, because I always liked being there, you know, regardless of Christmas. I just always, that was my favorite place to be. I ended up living there when I was a little older, but that was my favorite place to be. And to go there for Christmas um, was awesome. I mean, it, it was, it was uh, the same food. Um, my grandfather... Um, was Polish. He wasn't my biological grandfather, so I'm not Polish, but I took on some of his interest in Polish food just because. So we would always have fresh Polish sausage for Christmas. We would have uh, we would have the little smokies. We would have cheese and crackers. Chris was putting another log on the fire. We would have... Um, not that kind of log. Not the log in the sense that you think I have a log. <laughs> um... We'd have shrimp, we'd have, you know, uh, for some reason my grandpa would always make a macaroni salad uh, for Christmas Eve, and, uh, you know, that was the menu that we could count on, and it was so fun because it was, welcome back, Christopher, 
it was so fun because it was never a formal sit down dinner. It was like food is all over the table. We're all running around the house. Eat when you want. Grab a sausage. Run around. Eat some. Uh, eat some shrimp. From the moment that we walked in, my grandma had one of those big old Sears stereos with the giant speakers and the cassette player and the record player. And from the moment we walked in, some of the real classic Christmas music was always playing. So I am still extremely sentimental about Bing Crosby Christmas, about uh, Elvis Presley. Blue Christmas is one of my favorite songs in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's Nat King Cole did the Christmas song. Like, all the older Christmas songs. Patsy are, Cline. That stuff is my favorite yeah. Christmas music. All like, this, all the this. more modern stuff, it, it just, it's fine, but it doesn't. Yeah, but when I hear, so the Christmas song is, is such a classic song. It's the one, uh, uh, every mother's child is gonna spy. That's done by one person and one person only. You know, Nat King Cole. John Stamos. John Stamos. <laughs> The man can croon. <laughs> it's done by two people and two people only. But the original is just so great. Um, so anyway, that was always playing in the background at my grandma's house. And of course the tape would pop, as they say. And we'd have to rewind it or flip it over and do it again. And then, you know, you'd get your Felice Navidad and your grandma got run over by a reindeer thrown in. But I'm not going to lie, the beer was a-flowing. Uh, my grandma would drink her beer, my mom would drink a few beers, my grandpa was always drinking beer. And so, you know, about an hour or two into it, uh, the grown-ups were acting uh, sillier than us. They were dancing around the living room. But it was a blast. And then as the night went on, you know, we just kind of, we kind of wore down, me and my sisters. We just kind of got tired and got ready and and many times, most times, we would spend the night there. And we'd yeah, actually have Christmas say, morning there. Did you, there. like, stay or did yeah. you go? Most, I, I, I'd say split in half from probably 8 to, I don't know, I started living there when I was like 15. So probably 8 to 15, we, it was probably split right down the middle. Some Christmases we would go home, uh, which was really tough for us because my grandma's house just felt better. Yeah. Um, but a lot of Christmases we would all stay there and we'd have our Christmas morning at my grandma's. And then, uh, and then Christmas morning, uh, I've already talked about, I might have talked about our Christmas Eve rituals with my sisters. Uh, we would all pile into the same room. Uh, we'd have snacks. We would, uh, a couple of days before, we would go and we would hit up the bulk section of the grocery store and we would get a bag of Sour Patch Kids. And we'd grab some chips and we'd grab a few things and we'd hide them under my bed. And then uh, we would all pile in the same room together and I would probably be the last to fall asleep, but we would wake up around 3, 4 in the morning. <laughs> we yes. would go out. This is actually, I, I, I haven't allowed my kid to do this yet, but we would actually go into the living room. And we would observe, and we would just look and wonder. I think my kid does it. Does he? Yeah, he, you know, he's, he, he acts surprised. In the you morning. think he knows? But I think he yeah, does. I think man. he comes out. I think he's too <laughs> excited. Yeah. Um, and then Christmas morning was, you know, uh, always organized. We, we always like to do it a little bit more organized and just kind of dive in and, and get stuff. So somebody would play Santa, as always. Us too. Uh, we'd all sit around and we'd get handed presents. And we'd open them and ooh and ah, and we'd show each other, look what we got. And we'd start a pile next to ourselves and, you know, we'd sit in the middle of this pyramid of, of gifts. And, uh, and... Uh, Families are kind of torn on this. Uh, I liked to always take my stuff and immediately bring it to my room, unbox it, tear it out of the packaging, and set it up. I always, I, you know, I didn't. I, I know some families will stack their toys. I see some of River's stuff is still under River's, the tree. Yeah, River does it all. He some are upstairs in his room, some are at his mom, some are under the tree. You know, Mine just, always went straight to my room. And, uh, and since it was always, uh, most of the time, wrestling figure related, I would immediately begin playing. I would, you know, I had to have a Christmas Day wrestling card. So, you know, that's my, uh, and, and that kind of went on. Um, I saw a video, we have an old videotape of a Christmas in 1994, and I was 18. And it nauseates me, because uh, the same Christmas Eve traditions are happening, but I was such a... I was such a, uh, I was so frustrated with myself watching it because 
I knew everything that I was getting because I had practically picked out all the clothes that I'd gotten, and it it just kind of ended. So I can officially say that in in my life, Christmas, the excitement, pretty much uh, R.I.P. 1994. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> That's my Christmas Eve. Stories, traditions, rituals, how about yours? Um, you know, it's somewhat similar, and I think it's similar for a lot of folks, but um, Christmas Eve, I talked about it before, I grew up uh, living with my grandparents, uh, my great-grandparents. Mm. Um, you know, my, my the other family members were around, my mom was just just down the street, my grandma was next door, my great great grandma was on the other side. <laughs> like all of the families were all the families were everywhere. Like it wasn't, you know, you didn't have to you could throw a rock and you'd hit a Seaver or a Ross or a Pratt, you know. I think you did that often. Didn't we're you? all there. <laughs> um, but so Christmas Eve was we'd get the family together at at my house, my great grandma's house. Um, but we also had family friends come over. Oh. Um, and that was a tradition. Like, that lasted well into the teens, to my teens. Um, we had some family friends and some friends of friends come over, and, uh, you know, their drink of choice was, like, champagne and wine and whatnot. Um, and for the kids, it was sparkling grape juice. Of course. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, they laid out a... Again, yeah, it would start around four or five. Um, they always laid out like a platter of food, you know, it was little meats and uh, definitely little smokies and little cheese smokies and crackers. Have been around since 1820. <laughs> Pepperoni, you know, we had like veggies and dips and, and mm -hmm. you know, all that type of stuff. Um, I always had radishes. My grandma always had radishes on the table for mm. some reason. What eight year old wants a radish? <laughs> Dig them um, today. And then, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was very much like you described, and, you know, I, it, it's interesting. It was running through my head as you were talking about it, is it, like, so familiar, like, because, <laughs> like, the kids would just kind of do their own thing, run around, the adults would be laughing, doing their thing, like, uh, when you wanted food, you just went up, took a plate, you just ran and did whatever. Um, we always had Christmas music on, but we also had, um, we would have the TV on in the background, but, like, Turn, with the sound turned off, and there'd be something Christmassy playing in the background. Sure. Um, earlier on, I can remember, <laughs> my grandma would always turn it to the log channel, the Yule log <laughs> channel. Uh, so we'd have that fake, <clears throat> fake Yule log burning, even though we had a fireplace. Uh, we <laughs> channel on. Why? Why yeah. start a fire? I know we had that. We had the Yule log going. Um, and I remember <clears throat> for a couple of years there, our family friends would come over, um, a, a few of them were musicians, and they would come over and they would like pull out their guitars or oh, whatever, man. and they would sing Christmas songs, I dig and it. some of us would like get in on it, and some of us not so much, <laughs> you know? I dig. Um, I like that. And then, as I got, I would say... 11, 12, 13, um, an odd tradition began, and that was we would watch The Three Amigos. <laughs> um, All right. My mom took me to see The Three Amigos when it opened in 1986. It was December of 1986, I believe. Uh, Please let us know if we're Winter wrong. of 1986. Anyway... Uh, and I just, I loved it, and my mom loved it, and I just, well, I always thought those three were hilarious, Martin Short, Chevy Chase, and, uh, Steve Martin. Uh, but for some reason, I'm, and I'm, I can't even place why, we, we started watching, on VHS, we would watch The Three Amigos every Christmas Eve, I mean, it, Sure, we wouldn't sit there and really focus on right, it. Right, but it was on. But it was on. Right. We would just, somebody would be like, put in three amigos. And, you know, people would still be 
talking. Nobody's going to focus on an entire movie on Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but there it was. <laughs> Three amigos. And, like, me and the family friend kids and, and you know, our neighbors and whatever. And, and we would sing some of the songs that were in The Three Amigos <laughs> as it was on. Uh, so I do remember that. Good. Christmas morning. I, for me, this was always, this seemed to me like uh, official Christmas. A kid running down stairs and seeing the explosion of happiness in the living room. And so we had stairs. So to me it was a very traditional, typical <laughs> Christmas. My room where it was upstairs and I had, you know, probably till I was 10 years old, I had footy pajamas. So I always wore these footy pajamas and I would just cruise. You know, sometimes I would fall, trip down the stairs, <laughs> uh, anything to get to that first view of uh, the magic that that blew up in in the living room and um, once again there was a Santa there was a designated Santa sure then someone would be like okay you're gonna give presents you're gonna put the pile to grandma you're gonna put the pile to Aunt Kathy you're gonna put the pile to you know and you're gonna put a pile to Chris <laughs> um, and then we would just sort of we would Tasmanian devil it and we'd go at it. And I was very much like my son. I didn't like run and take him to the room. I, what I did was I put some aside and I'd you know, open stuff and play with stuff for like 10 minutes. Then I'd be like, ah. <laughs> and I'd get under that stuff, open it, play with it. Ah. And then I'd just kind of you know, systematically go through <laughs> Move the bunch and play with them until I probably was passed out on the floor, mm. just like spent from the the magic. Um, and there was always breakfast. There was always traditional Christmas breakfast. Uh, that was one thing I I remember to this day. And Katie keeps it alive. My wife keeps it alive. Is that when you wake up, you're smelling that bacon. You're smelling the you know the rolls and, and so she'll get up before Christmas starts and make breakfast. Uh, we now we both do. Okay, uh, we'll do it. Um, so that Rivers got it rocking. Wow, when he when he comes down. But I never cared, like to eat. I was too. I mean, I I think I, I mean I certainly didn't as a child. But it was ready. It was like yeah, Grandma's making breakfast. But that's just a memory that sticks with me. Is that bacon, the eggs, you know, the the orange juice. That's Everything awesome. is just like sitting in you know. That's awesome. Living room here, kitchen way over here, but you can smell oh, it, you can yeah. see it. Or just ah. like, Christopher, you know, <laughs> eat before you open. Or sometimes I just couldn't wait. Or you know, and then of course it was always the stockings first. Stockings first. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. As we dump out the stockings, <laughs> uh, and then uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Just talking about that. <clears throat> just talk. Ho hopefully, you know. Hopefully, we're we're. We're hitting home for a lot of you guys uh, who are of our you know similar ages as us, which a lot of you are. Uh, hopefully, you know we're we're helping you relive some of your Christmas magic and Christmas memories because you talk about the stairs, and I agree. I mean, stairs are crucial for the Christmas experience. And yeah, ever since my I mean my kid, my oldest is five. I have you know five videos. On Christmas morning, of him and and his mother, you know, coming down the stairs. Yeah. And I basically. I do too. <laughs> yeah. And I and I basically want I basically rec record and watch his face as he comes down and sort of turns the corner and sees sees the explosion. Um, and it's awesome. For the longest time, though, growing uh, as River was growing up, we never. I didn't live in a house with my wife at the time and River until five years ago. We always had apartments okay. or townhouses. Uh, places that just didn't have stairs, actually. Yeah. Um, and when I divorced my first wife <coughs> and and the whole river thing was split up, uh, for the first year that we were split, river was dropped off in the morning from his mother's house. And I didn't like it. Oof. I just did. I just 
didn't like that feeling. I wanted him to experience what I experienced. And for five years, River didn't have that. So I was like, listen, <laughs> Christmas Eve, after the big family party with your side of the family, he's coming back here and he's sleeping over so that he can run from his bedroom mm -hmm. down the stairs to the living room here and see his fun Christmas morning. And so since he was six, he's done that. So I, I have cherished that. And even this, and you'll see in the video, even this, <laughs> this Christmas, I was right there waiting for him, <laughs> 10 year old kid, to come down those stairs and to see the, the Christmas magic. Before we make puddles of tears here on the table, <laughs> why don't we give these guys a break? Let them see what we just experienced three days ago, four days ago. Uh, take a look, guys. Sit back. Enjoy. We are bringing you into the personal lives of the New 80s Revolution. Enjoy our families. Enjoy what we enjoyed on Christmas morning. Take a look at this. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Keep your eyes closed. Good. Good. I'm going to take my picture with that. Ah! Oh, you got to get one of my good leaves face. Uh, hang up. Uh, uh, uh. What? Uh, 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 come on! <laughs> Do your face! Okay, here, let's. Um. Oh, what? What? Oh. what the heck? What? Oh, what is the mother of? Wait, no, first! Come here, Liam, come no, here! First That's for you. That's for you. That's your gas pump. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't open that. Leave that alone. What? What? Uh oh. Well, Liam's cutting through the presents like a nut. Right. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, hold wait, wait, on. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I think it might fight. Hold on. That could be dead. That could be dead. Alright, take a picture in front of all, all the present stores, then we'll start tearing everything open. Wow! Uh -oh. Voltron! Voltron! Oh, I know how to do this. What is this? Then he's ready for another one, I think. Penny, you ready for a present? Ready for one, Penny? Uh, Gotta open a present. One, Penny. Oh. Oh. What is that? I can't pull it The off. biggest. Transformer you've ever seen. What the heck? Liam. Hey, look at that. What is that? Liam, it's your own proton pack, dude. Yeah. And it plays something on the wall. Oh. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It comes with a little flyby. Oh, my and goodness. Uh-huh. Hey. Hey, don't 
Voltron guy. Another Voltron. Oh, oh Finney! What? What'd you get? Another remote control. Wow. Is that for Liam right there on the bottom there? Here, open it up, buddy. Another transformer. I did do it too. You got one too? A giant Batmobile with a Batman figure. Pretty cool. Now we both get one, Finny. I can set this on my belt. What is that, Liam? A grave digger pillow. Oh, you're doing that again, Mr. Liam. Do it again, Liam. You found it at my toy store. That was a while ago. Yay! What is that? A giant rhino. You like a little fold? Mm. Of course it does. I see it. It's in there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't get the giant mummer, Daddy will get it for you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, look at the front, dude. Laser, you can keep it. No big deal. Thundercat Pops? Yeah. Well, that's pretty awesome. Here you go, Finny. Oh, I can't stop with a hand, Team Pop. What do you think, dude? That's called the ad at, at dude. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, Finny got power tools. tools. More tools, Finny? Yeah, Whoa. it comes with Stormtrooper. We got to get other guys. Show mommy, oh, yeah. Liam. We got to get other guys. Yeah. That big bag, Liam, and then you got presents from mommy and daddy to open. Oh. Yeah, I got one for you, mom, from you. No, the, actually, that lino was from Santa. Mumra will be from me. If Santa didn't get it for you, Mummer will be from me next week. I'll get it for you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so, 
my 10 year old decided to be way too excited last night <laughs> and barely slept at all.
That says it all, guys. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And you know what? We kid. We kid. But there's always, especially for me this year, a, a wave of depression. A wave of sadness hits. And, oh yeah, my kid's been breaking my heart over the last couple of days because he's feeling it. And this is like the first time. He didn't necessarily feel it last year, but he's made a couple of statements to me like, you know, that he's he's bummed that, you know, Christmas is over. And I don't think it has anything to do with the gifts he got. I think it has to do with just the atmosphere yeah. and the fun. And, it and, is, man. So, today driving around, I noticed that all the Christmas music was gone. Oh, Lord. I'm wham. And, I, and then I was like, you know what? It's over. Um, <laughs> you know that, and but then I go, thank Crom, it comes back every year. It'll be back. <laughs> That's the thing. It'll be back next year. And that anticipation grows again. It does. And you can try to do something different mm. and fun. And I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed a look into our Christmases. And speaking of, it'll be back. We're gonna eat some chocolates. We're going to drink some sodas, and we will be back right after these messages. Check them out. We'll see you soon. Caught it. Anytime Pop Touch Pop Up, people pop up. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. People pop up with Kellogg's Pop Tarts. Pop up here and there. Pop up everywhere. They pop up with warm, frosty Pop Tarts. Pop up with strawberry, blueberry, raspberry, cherry, brown sugar, oh. strawberry, chocolate fudge, and a yes, Kellogg's makes all these Pop Tarts taste. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. People pop up with Kellogg's Pop Tarts. Pop, pop. Fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. Cobra's attacking our winter outpost. Call on the members of the G.I. Joe team. And here's Gung Ho, Airborne, Doc, and Snow Job. And every Joe has a two handed battle grip. Get aboard the Battle Bear. It's G.I. Joe to the rescue. G.I. Joe. American hero. We chased off Cobra. Way to go, Joe. G.I. Joe Battle Bear. Joe and Cobra figures each sold separately from Hasbro. Hot Wheels, Firebird, Funny Car, Tri-Car, X8, the Byrayman, and Hotbird, each sold separately. Now let's see them in action. And they're off and running. They're fast, they're hot, that's why they call them Hot Wheels. It's a face-off. Howie's Hotbird can really haul, but Tommy's Tri-Car, X8 is running great. Frank's Firebird, Funny Car, just missed birds, Byrayman by inches. You can zap them, zip them, crash them, bash them. Hot Wheel cars are built to take plenty of punishment and keep on rolling fast. So fast, even I can't talk fast enough to tell you about all the action. Oh, wow. Hot Wheels, Firebird, Funny Car, Tri-Car, X8, Byrayman, and Hotbird, each sold separately. Some cars not for use with some sets. From Hot Wheels by Mattel. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Memories, memories, memories. That commercial tasted good. Whew. Left a sweet taste in my mouth. Well, we've come to the part of the show where we show you what we got from Santa Claus, what we got from our families for Christmas. I... I have not seen a lot of your stuff. You know, you kept some of your stuff out, and I happened to notice it, but I, I didn't. I don't know what you got. You uh, don't have a clue what I, I got. One thing. I, I showed you. And I want it. I showed you Christmas actually, morning because I was so excited. Yeah, I, I tracked it down, and I, I found one. Okay. I, I, I want it. You I, need I, it. I had, I had zero idea it ever existed. Me neither. So. Wow, these guys are going nuts. One of <laughs> But, uh, <clears throat> so... Christopher has no idea what I got. I don't know what he got. This is all going to be a surprise for you guys as it is for me and Chris. And uh, let's do it. Let's show these guys what we got for Christmas. And I'm going to go first because I have one thing sitting right here on the table. Zoinks! You got a, a priority mail package. Someone was very frugal. Somebody gave me <laughs> a sliced open priority mail envelope from the U.S. Post Office. <clears throat> One of five. When I <clears throat> when I opened this, uh, when I when I when I opened it, uh, I saw this, and so I knew it was uh, I knew it was something in there. I knew it was a, a picture of some kind, a photo. I assumed. Um, I'm, I'm doing it's a. It's of me. Uh, well. <laughs> Professionally. I, I have enough video footage of you that I don't need a photo. <laughs> Uh, I thought, so uh, I'm, I'm creating kind of a home, 
I don't. I feel embarrassed calling it a home theater, but I have a room in my house where I where we've set up a big TV and I have some movie posters on the wall, lots of movie posters. But they're the 11 by 17 version, which you have a ton of, and you turned me on to and gave me one. Um, so I thought maybe that was in here, you know, a poster. No, one of ah oh man of my adult life, one of my favorite gifts, the most unique thing I've ever seen. I will show it to you now. You guys know that I am a huge fan, if you watched our TV show episodes, you know that I'm a huge fan of the TV show Leave It to Beaver. It's my number one favorite show tied with like three others. Um, so I got this. I got a hand-painted, huh, a hand-painted uh, portrait of... The Cleaver Home, <laughs> 211 Pine Street, Mayfield, USA. This was the front. This was the home that uh, was featured in. I, I think, um, all but like two of the seasons. All uh, they moved in 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 the middle of like season that's a, three. That's a very cool, like, yeah, unique. Yeah, like, there's 1957 of these made, which. 1957 is the year that the show started. <laughs> nice. This is number 23. Uh, I do not know the artist's name. I cannot read his signature. I think his last name is Peck. And he sells his art on eBay. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a little family of four painted in the doorway there. Uh, and they are made to look like the Cleavers. Um, so this is going to get... Uh, framed and it will be hung in my pseudo theater room. That's and if I cool. ever get to meet those two again, if I ever get a chance to oh, meet yeah. uh, Tony Dow and Jerry Mathers again, uh, we'll be doing this. We'll be doing the circuit. So hopefully, uh, I'll be able to meet them again. I would love them oh, to sign sure. this. That's, that, uh, would, that would add it. Yeah. Know. So, I mean, this is just not personalized, <clears throat> no best wishes, just put your name on it, please. So, one of my favorite gifts that I've ever gotten as an adult, right here, That's great. is this uh, painting of the Cleaver home. I'm glad I could bring that wish to you. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. You have, <laughs> you've made my Christmas. <clears throat> All right. Your so, turn, sir. Well, I... Um... I have a lot, and I'm going to try to go through them fast, uh, and I also okay. have stuff that, like, uh, I have a large group of buddies, um, about 12 of them. <laughs> Not all of them are, like, super close, but a good portion of them are. Um, they're, they're people that I, you know, have made the movies with over the years, who've been in my films, um, who've, and just became my best friends, so a lot of them... We exchange Christmas gifts uh, every year. Um, so I'm going to start with this one. This was from my good friend, Meredith Host. It is a VHS fleece blanket. Uh, yeah. Like an old school VHS. What they basically did was they took picture. They had to have taken yeah, a picture. Yeah, a collection of people's VHS, so there's like, you know, Return to Oz. <laughs> um, I saw Nightmare on Elm Street. Aren't Teen you? Wolf, My Science Project. Look at this you thing. Know, Gandhi. Yeah, it's so cool. Uh, so that was one of the gifts I got uh, from my dear, dear friend Meredith Host. Uh, it was very awesome. And, uh, Does Meredith watch her show? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell her to. <laughs> Meredith. She's she's a very busy woman. <laughs> Meredith, if you are watching, uh, that's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. <laughs> and though you don't know me, you'd like me. <laughs> so I'd like you to make me a blanket. <laughs> Please. Because it's awesome. Thank you. Well, I think she actually got it from someplace. I'd like you to get me the blanket. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Great gift. Yeah. Very unique. Very cool. <laughs> uh, 
I, I'll just go into this too. Whoa! I'll do this quick. I just saw something that I didn't see earlier. Um, now this. Oh. This is. This, these are from. This is from fans. What? Yes. Um, Brandon and Dustin Bennett um, have been fans of my movies for probably a decade. Um, and recently became fans of our show. Hello. And so I get this box <laughs> in the mail. And the reason they did this was because they watched our show. When I got mine. And where I said I had almost every Ghostbusters toy growing up but the firehouse. Wow. Uh, and they sent... The Ecto-1, but I, I did have the Ecto-1, and I actually gave that to River when he was like two, and he destroyed now it. Now you have another Ecto-1. So I have another Ecto-1. Not complete, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's cool. But they did send me the complete Holy firehouse. Holy There's the sign. Yes, and... Oh! Trap. <laughs> and... The, the fire pole works. It's all there. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I was... Where are they from? Uh, Indiana, I believe. I believe it's Indiana. The Bennett boys. The Bennetts, yeah. Um, just... There's something in here. Oh, I think stand up there. individuals. Obviously. Um, again, they've... Been fans of, of my films for years, um, and I was so happy to hear that they enjoy the 80s revolution, the new 80s revolution, um, and, uh, I mean, crazy. <laughs> uh, so, so now we both have a firehouse. Yes. So we can collect, yes. <laughs> because I think you got a couple figures I have for Christmas. My, oh, yeah, I from, did. From yes, your path. I did, but I'm not opening those. Ah. Those I'm not opening. So we can collect together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How about that? So that's cool. That's, that's awesome. That's I did not know that you... Wow. Good for you. All right. Uh, thank you, Bennett. Yeah. Bennett. And thank you guys for being fans of the show. I believe they've commented, too. So Have they? I think so. Right. Yeah, at least Brandon did. I'll be looking. Uh, previous viewers of my channel before it became our channel um you knew you know that i have uh been collecting uh nes games uh with the very uh, very loose far away goal of a complete set which we know and and you don't have, have the complete set <laughs> i don't have the complete I mean, set that's yeah. a that's a lot of nintendo games i have 409 nintendo games uh, there are some that are completely out of range, price-wise, uh, but thank God for... Do, thank Krom? Do, is Krom. That what you say? Thank Krom. Krom. For uh, uh, repros, because I will be the guy that gets the $3,000 game made into a $50 reproduction oh, cart. for sure. Absolutely, and I will be fine with that. So, every year, uh, for holidays where gifts are exchanged, Easter, my birthday, uh, I get some Nintendo games. So... Christmas was no exception. Uh, I have four more games to add awesome. to the collection. Uh, these I don't like. I'm kind of weird like that. I don't. I don't want the collectors to. Huh. Yeah, because they don't. They take up too much. Anyway, hmm. uh, Ghostbusters dos to add to the collection. Well, this is really old school. Yeah. Here's my Nintendo game. This is way back a year ago. When I started <laughs> this thing. Uh, David Crane's. A boy and his blob, and if you know who David Crane is, he uh, was one of the uh, pioneers at Atari, and he has his name attached to a lot of uh, Activision games, David Crane. So A Boy and His Blob, uh, Pinball Quest, and Q-Bert. You know, what can you say about Q-Bert? So, four more Nintendo games, that, that makes it four... Uh, 13, and uh, this is not something that I, I've, 
I will get them for Christmas, like I said, I'll get them for gift giving holidays. I've kind of shied away from grabbing them on my own. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I still really, you know, feel passionate about collecting these, but I'm not going to retro game stores and, you know, buying them up. Uh, I don't even really get them at toy shows anymore. I'm, I'm looking for other stuff, and everybody else gets me them. So, yeah. 413, four more Nintendo games from Santa Claus Christmas morning. That's great. Yes, sir. Um, okay, I'm going to keep going through friend stuff first. Uh, so, my buddy Andrew, my good friend Andrew, this year he gifted me the wonderful, well, wonderfully cheesy, terrible, but great 1986 classic Never Too Young to Die starring John Stamos and Gene Simmons John as, Stamos. A, as a hermaphrodite Ooh. A villain. Oh. <laughs> John Stamos, a past guest on our show. Yes, and John Stamos is a, a James Bond-like spy in this film. And I love this movie. I actually really love this movie. It's terrible. I love it. Uh, I showed it on 35mm in Syracuse. The director of the film sent me his personal print, and we showed it on 35mm at the Palace Theater in Syracuse. But, and finally, finally, this, folks, this movie was never available on DVD before, and this is a Blu-ray and DVD. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, Shout Select. He You're also the only person who have purchased that. <laughs> no, I've, I know people who got really? it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, now he also got me this amazing book. It came from the video aisle. This is the history of Charles Band's Full Moon Pictures. The you guys know Puppet Master, subspecies, all those great. You know, Cheesy. on the shelves from 1989 on, uh, Charles Band ruled the, the world of direct-to-DVD horror movies, <laughs> cheesy horror movies. Um, in the earlier days, he had Empire Pictures, uh, you know, Reanimator, mm. uh, From Beyond, the Ghoulies films. Um, but in 89, he started Full Moon Pictures, and this book chronicles all of that. So... And you're going to read that whole thing. Oh, hell yes, I'm going to read it. For sure. For sure. Uh, I actually have the Empire book as well. The History of Empire. Charles Band's Empire. But So, Andrew, thank you. Got me those gifts. Well, crema. Crema. Everybody had a nice um, crema? Do you want me to do Yeah, do more? some more because you got, you got a plethora. Okay. Uh, this is from my friend Bobby. Bobby! Hey, Bobby. I know Bobby. A good friend. Yeah, Bobby. What's up, Bobby? Good, good friend Bobby. Uh, 17 years strong, our friendship. He got me the complete third season of Different Strokes and the complete fourth season of Different Strokes. And then he got me Curtis Armstrong's book, Revenge of the Nerd. <laughs> Curtis Armstrong played Booger. In the Revenge of the Nerds films, he is an 80s actor staple. Why did they call him? Better off dead. I mean, come on. This guy is a 80s icon. Uh, I'm really excited to read Curtis Armstrong's book. So thank you, Bobby. Uh, interesting note, Curtis Armstrong is a friend of Bobby's family. Oh, wow. Bobby's, Bobby gets good <laughs> with some celebs. He's got, oh yes, yes. He, uh, he actually manages, uh, convention manages uh, Kimberly Beck from Friday the 13th Part 4 and uh, Roller Boogie and, and other such classics. But uh, anyway, thank you Bobby. Bobby H. Bobby. They, uh, I think they're up to season six on different they strokes. Are. They are. And I, they're all coming out. I know, I've got them in my, my yeah. wish list. Um, it's slowly getting picked off so thank you everybody who's been who's been doing that for me yeah. get, get, hooking me up with those uh, solid uh, okay so this is from my friend Josh my good friend Josh uh, he knows one of my favorite films is the 1985 made for TV Halloween film The Midnight Hour 
Uh, I have it on a bootleg DVD. I have the theatrical poster. <laughs> I have a bootleg uh, um, lobby card of the film. And now I have the official VHS of the Midnight Hour. This was an out of print uh, Anchor Bay release in 1999. Um, previously, it came out in 89 from live video, um, but that went out of print quick. Um, and then Anchor Bay brought it back. And now you can't get it anymore. <laughs> but you got it. But yes, so Josh, thank you so much adding this to my Midnight Hour collection. Um, he also makes these delightful chocolate balls. He sends them to me every Christmas. Uh, they're delicious. I don't Josh's know. balls melt in your mouth. <laughs> That's right. I, I don't know. I'll have to give it. I'll have to have you. You can't keep your hands on Josh's balls. I mean, it's pretty. It's like, uh, like a. I would love to taste hey, Josh's balls. In my balls and being salty and brown. Uh, real quick. Yeah. Let's go through this one. I think this is the last of the. Now this was a fan. This is a fan uh, uh, of my films, um, who is also now watching the show. Yeah. His name is Robert Hoffman. What's up? And he sent me <laughs> Secret Weapons. This is a, a 1980, I think, what is it, 1985 action movie with Linda Hamilton, Sally Gina Kellerman. Davis, and Sally Kellerman. <laughs> Sally Kellerman, uh, best known in my life for Back to School. Uh, best known in my life from Meatballs 3. <laughs> um, he, throughout the years, he's been telling me about this film, and I finally get to own it and watch it, and see what it's all about. So thank you, Robert. He also sent me a vintage, <laughs> still-wrapped Memorex cassette tape. That's a winner right there. And he knows that I'm a huge Degrassi Junior High fan from the 80s. Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. And he sent me a vintage Degrassi High bookmark. Yes, folks, I love Degrassi. Growing up in Wellsville, New York, it played on PBS, Degrassi Junior High. Uh, it's no 90210, but uh, it'll do. No, it's not. So Great that stuff. I love from, that Memorex tape. That's fantastic. Yeah, so that's from, uh, I believe that's all from my friends. So. Okay, excellent. Friends and fans. Yes. And now yeah. joint fans. That's right. That's good. Now, now I have fans, too. <laughs> that's right, you do. Got more? Or you want me to go? You go, man, because there's, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot more. You got some stuff there, don't you? You had to just really... Y'all know that uh, I'm a uh, big fan of the Cabbage Patch Dolls. And... Uh, uh, you know, they, the dolls themselves, uh, of course, were huge, and they were so huge that Coleco, of course, and, and Hasbro eventually, um, branched out to other toy items to capitalize on the popularity. Oh, yeah. I mean, we had that, man, do you remember the uh, Cabbage Patch, uh, the roundy thing? Got it. Had to, yeah, yeah. With the little cabbage the heads game, that Yes, up. the sure. cabbage heads yeah, that popped up. Man, yeah. that was a that was down, a in, the, uh, around down the in the cave. Uh, so this uh, was opened on Christmas morning. It is, uh, they did a lot of these. They had uh, some Disney ones. They had other pretty awesome, you know, characters. But also the Cabbage Patch doll talking phone from Hasbro Play School. Now this uh, works, but uh, it has the haunted voice. So the batteries are not in it, but basically what you would do is dial a three-button combo, 
and you would talk to one of the Cabbage Patch dolls on a dial. So I had a Sesame Street one. Yeah, Sesame Street. I remember having a Mickey Mouse one. So 584 would dial Ramy or Rammy. Cabbage Patch dolls always had the worst <laughs> yeah. names. The, this doll's name is literally R-A-M-I-E. That's either Rammy or Ramy, and I don't know. But this one is Sybil Sadie. So the, just terrible names. But anyway, it would ring the Cabbage Patch doll. They'd say something to you, uh, you know, eat your veggies and be nice to your mom. And uh, you, would, you would, you know, have hours of fun playing with the Cabbage Patch doll talking phone. That's pretty cool. From Hasbro Play School. Thank you very much. Proudly adding, uh, proudly added to my Cabbage Patch doll collection. I never had Cabbage Patch. My sister had the Cabbage Patch. Most uh, sisters did. But like the strawberry shortcake thing, mm -hmm. I like seeing product. You know what I mean? Because it totally brings you back to that that eighties. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Living in the eighties. I mean, it was everywhere. Yeah. Cabbage uh, Patch dolls was well, like we talked about before. Cabbage Patch dolls <laughs> began the psychotic toy craze um, yeah you know go back and like we like we said before look up some videos from uh, the <laughs> 1983 cabbage patch doll release and you will literally see uh, mobs of people fighting over the limited release of cabbage patch dolls <laughs> you know strangling each other to get their hands on these dolls so that's uh, that that's the that's the talking phone Okay, now I'm going to go into presents that were given to me by my wife. Uh, she tends to go a little overboard <laughs> um, for birthdays and Christmas. Um, and then it's kind of dead the rest of the year. But that's, but it's, <laughs> she doesn't even talk to you the rest of the But year. that's okay, because the amount of stuff that she gets me for these two big times in a year is just ridiculous. And I, I think it's overkill. As much as I love it, I'm still like... You should just return them, then. Oof. <laughs> so, let's go with this first. Um, mm, mm, mm. Now, this is the... <laughs> this is the... I can already see T-Bob rolling his eyes. T-Bob, keep your eyes uh, in your... <laughs> keep them straight. This is the... Back to the Future Part 2, Hot Toys, Marty McFly. Um, and my kid wanted to do an unboxing, so there will be an unboxing. And T-Bob, you don't have to watch it. Don't even watch it, T-Bob. But we love um, you, so watch it. So this is... My nose itches. I'm just going to show you real quick. Wow. Holy cow. Um, but this is the Hot Toys, Marty McFly. Jeez. From man. Back to the Future 2. All the accessories, highly detailed, articulated, probably probably cost like two hundred and forty dollars. Wow, that um, is amazing. But you know, we'll do a. You know, my kid was instantly like, "Well, we got to do a, an unboxing. We got to show people uh, the, the new hot toys. We got to do that." But anyway, so that was one of the gifts. I wouldn't even want to... You have to show that box off, even. Like, what are you going to do with that box? Well, we always keep the boxes. It's just you it's a beautiful keep, box. Keep the boxes. I mean, they're in storage. We have so many hot toys. Yeah. Um, so that... That's amazing. That's one of them. And then... We got Raphael <laughs> from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie. I love the film. Uh, as you've seen, I have Leonardo and Michelangelo, and she got me Raphael. Mm -hmm. Again, this is like a hundred, hundred and twenty dollar mm -hmm. figure. Uh, highly detailed. These things are insane. They look exactly like the Jim Henson created yeah. costumes from the Turtles movie. Amazing. So that That's as amazing. well will be a unboxing video um then this is fun uh oh uh oh i give you trouble this is the popomatic trouble in the vintage 1986 style 
packaging that they've been sort of re, you know. Re-releasing. Yeah, yeah, which we talked about a little yeah. bit in our Toys R Us video. You know what I might have known? I think those are 80s, well, maybe not. Those kind of look like 80s kids, don't they? No, it is. Oh, they are. This is the picture. These are the pictures on the original box. There we go. Um, there we go. Retro series. Could you imagine, like, this kid is, like, 35, and he sees himself <laughs> in Target again? I know, he's like, holy crap! It's me! Residuals, baby! And he got nothing for it! Yeah. Uh, That's so awesome. I thought that was cool. I mean, it's not the exact uh, original box, but I love that these companies are trying to sort of bring back that feel. Yeah. Um, so it is the same kids, lettering, everything... Mm -hmm. You know, and they say in the corner here, the retro 1986. Uh, but I thought that was really cool. That's still pretty sweet. Very cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, very awesome of her. Uh, you know, she's she's appealing to my... Psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, again, same thing. Throwback. Oh! Yeah, they got up in the cross. Crossfire! So, here is the retro bringing it back. Crossfire. Toys R Us exclusive, I believe. Yes. Um, tried to give you that retro packaging. Now, this isn't the original Crossfire packaging. Mm -mm, a big box. Um, yes, that was a much bigger box. Uh, different characters, but when they... When they did it again, um, this was the image. These these dudes were the image on the box. That's the 90s dudes. This was the, yes, this was the font and everything. Um, so this is the recreated Crossfire, exclusive to Toys R Us. Pretty cool. Again, yeah. uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't need... The original. That's okay. Um, well, yes, you did. And you probably didn't pay what people are charging nowadays. And that's exactly why my wife was just like, you know what? <laughs> Recreation is just fine. <laughs> um, and that's really all I need. I just need that, that gut feeling of, oh my gosh, Crossfire. The board, the extra game itself is, is identical. I mean, it's, it's the same mold. Yeah, it's so it's made by Hasbro, who... So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to busting that out. It's a fun game. We we would have a lot of fun playing that game. Yeah. It's a it's a really fun. Well, we're gonna have to play it. Okay. Maybe we'll play it on an episode of board games for the eighty the new eighties revolution. Sounds good. All right. Uh. Can I leave? Uh, where is my? Where's the? The yeah. bottle. Can I put the bottle back. I don't know. I don't know what I did with the bottle. Alright. Is it over there on the couch? Might be. Hiding? I think I want to show the bottle first. Yeah. Ah. Okay. He's found the bottle! Well, I'll actually, you know what? I'll save it, because it goes with another it goes with another item. Alright, so anyway, this was this was the gift that I was uh I'll tell you. I knew probably half of my gifts even existed. So when I saw some of these things, I was seeing them for the first time. Or they were buried somewhere in my memory and I'd forgotten about them. I would have to assume that I ran into this somewhere in a store and paid no attention to it at the time. But when I opened this on Christmas, I legitimately... I mean, I freak out for all of my gifts legitimately, but this was... this blew me away. <laughs> Uh, and so I, I, I had to show you, and, and I showed Tansky. Tansky said, I have one. Of course. Of course. You were like, oh, that's awesome. Anyway, uh, you saw a few episodes ago, um, I showed you a Halloween costume. Um, not from Collegeville, but from... Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper. Well, so this is the Collegeville 1987 Freddy Krueger... Plastic so Halloween cool. costume. So cool. And mask. Uh, with a, and you know I love this, with a $7.99 sticker on it uh, that I assume is original. 
to the store. Uh, I'm not gonna. Do uh, this thing, man. I, I put it on my eBay list. I saw it. A reasonable price. I gotta grab it. Yeah, I no. love this. This is like so cool. <laughs> I mean, this is the winner. Um, take a look. <laughs> There's your Freddy Krueger costume. And so in fact, cool. I think that this was. Wasn't this costume in a? I can't remember the movie. Hey, Freddy Krueger. It was. A, it was a modern movie that was back in the '80s, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, it'll come to me. Maybe you guys will tell me. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, so I, I opened that up, and I was truly, truly blown away. That's a great gift. A Freddy Krueger vintage 1987, and when I say vintage, I mean like, this is what we wore. Yes. <laughs> this is how we dressed up for Halloween. Again, one of my favorite presents as an adult. And it's in great shape. It really like, is. Um, it, I mean, clearly it wasn't, nobody... Messy. Nobody touched this. Yeah. Uh, this plastic is very thin. Uh, this could have easily been popped out. It's not. It's not retaped. Um, somebody yeah. bought this and put it in their closet for thirty That's years. That's great. And this is fantastic. Do you want to do more? Yeah, I'll do another. Um, <laughs> this one I don't think you've seen. Uh, I, I know you've seen it. I don't think you've seen it here. This. Uh, has been an untalked about grail of mine. And again, when I talk about grails, I don't talk about holy grails, because I consider them more expensive, pretty much out of reach, but grails. And I have lots of grails. My pet monster was a grail. The Pee Wee's Playhouse is a, is a grail. Yeah, I got, I got some too. Um, I actually made a, uh, an extra wish list on Amazon that's called Ultimate Grails. Ultimate Grails. That I've just put, like, I've just gone. Yeah. I'm yeah, so My Pet Monster I accomplished. Pee-wee's Playhouse I have not. Um, the kit car, the Michael Knight, Knight Rider kit car was a grail that I have been able to get. Um, and there's a few more. But this was on that grail list. And it's not expensive. I think it's in the $20 to $30 range. Uh, not expensive, but a grail. And it, and it has eluded me all these years, and in fact, I've never really come across one at a toy show, uh, boxed or unboxed. But it was unboxed on Christmas Eve, or Christmas Day, folks. So it, I would assume this is all from your wife, right? This is all from my wife, yes, until I get to the present that my five-year-old got me. <laughs> oh, yeah, the... <laughs> The pogo ball. A pogo ball. Pogo ball is what you call it. It's a commercial. Uh, so basically, pogo ball was, you know, the hip 80s version of the pogo stick. I had them. Uh, and they came in all kinds of, like, cool, you know, uh, rad uh, colors and, and artwork. It looks so small. It is does look so small. And I will not... Try this out no, no. because I will snap it in half. But basically, it seems so big when we were younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But basically, you would stand on this, and this is a rubber ball, yeah, and you would clench. You'd clench your yeah. feet here, hold the ball with your feet, and just and jump. Bounce. <laughs> and you would pogo ball. And in the commercial, of course, you've got these gymnasts doing oh, man, these doing back flips and, and crazy stuff. And basically, Let's show it right here. Yeah, take a look at this. <laughs> look at these nuts. <laughs> Basically, you got on this thing and you jumped up and down until you fell off. There was no fancy moves. Maybe you could like grip it and do like the soccer kick where you swing your feet up, but like, that was about it. I have been wanting one of these ever since I began collecting. Just a wave of 80s and stuff yeah. hit me, man. Yeah. Uh, ever since I started collecting, I wanted one of these. And for one reason or another, I just didn't get one. And uh, uh, this, there you go. when I opened this, I mean, you know. I don't want to say that, you know, my, my reaction was so legitimate, but I, I'm sure some people at Christmas will open up something and go, hey, look at that, that's neat. And, you know, whatever, it might be neat or not. But every one of these presents blew me away. <laughs> every one. So, that's awesome. oh, go ball. That was great. Yeah. 
You want to okay. you want to throw a few up here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so again, this is all all everything else is from my wife. Um. So this she got me a <laughs> kid video T-shirt. Wow. Now kid video was a <laughs> was an '80s cartoon. Uh, where the band was live action, and then they got sucked into a cartoon world. Um, Haven't we all? I've, the theme of our show was from the kid video, was the kid video theme, the, the theme song for a while. Um, and so she got a kid video T-shirt, which is awesome. I, I do love me some kid video. I've only got the bootlegs because they never, they never made an official, and. Oh my goodness. I got an Alex P. Keaton <laughs> wow. Family Ties t-shirt. Wow. I, I think it's awesome. Wow. You will see me wearing these shirts on episodes of the show. Wow. That is just adding to my... That's fantastic. 80s t-shirt collection. Pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> um... <laughs> That's two t-shirts of yours that I must have. Let's see. Okay. Um, man, I don't even know how to do this because this is, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, we got Perfect Strangers, season one and two. Finally, I don't know how long it's been on my list. The whole set's coming. As I've told you, I don't really buy a lot for myself, uh, so that is why... A lot of these classic shows that I love are not in my possession because I just, I just, you know, I tend to get for others or give for bills or whatever. I just don't do it. And when you got a wife who goes nuts like this for Christmas and birthdays, eventually I'm going to get <laughs> these things that I want. So this is one of them. And then mm. the Tales from the Dark Side set. Great show. Complete series. Wonderful show. Magical show. Um, oh man. Okay. Uh, oh, this stuff is cool. Uh, I got the Friday the Thirteenth, the game. Modern for, for PS4. Yeah, there's a lot of modern stuff here. Um, but I can't wait to play it. Um, super. You know, if you've heard us talk. You like the movie? Friday the Thirteenth, the series is. Not the show, but the <laughs> the series, the the series of films are my favorite horror franchise. Anyway, can't wait to play that game. Holy now cow. this this was one of my grails. This is the Teenage wow. Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 arcade game for NES. Uh, one of my favorite NES games growing up. And here it is. She got it for me. Inbox. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Still with... The, we should order that. The free personal pan pizza gift certificate. Offer expires? It's got all the... Uh, Accoutrements, the wow. guide, everything. I just wow. I kind of flipped out. It's on video, <laughs> um, but yeah, I was so happy. Finally, back in my collection. Thank you, my beautiful wife. Wow. Um, then this is something cool. My son got me a. A present. This is the first time he's ever done it, um, and he got Katie, a, my wife, he got Katie a present, and he got his mother a present. What he did was he did a bunch of chores throughout December to earn money, and then he bought his own presents for each of us. Wow. Um, and he knew how much I wanted this, so obviously my wife helped him, but 
Finally. Finally. You heard me talk about it on the show. He got me my Sega Genesis <laughs> Moonwalker. River. <laughs> Holy cow. This is not a reproduction. I can't wait to play it. It's a terrible game, but I loved it so much. What did that do to you when you opened it and you knew it was from your kid? I, I mean, you see it on video. I like, I instantly like hugged him. I, I just thought it was so sweet. Genesis Moonwalker, my favorite Sega game! <laughs> thank you, buddy. You can start playing that today. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So awesome. Uh, he, he put a lot of thought into that. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, River. Mm. <laughs> So let me, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me go in the same vein here. Uh, my boy is only five, uh, but he, <clears throat> his mother, uh, we found a seller close to town uh, on eBay. She ordered something from him on eBay and then realized that he was literally 15 minutes away from us. And so she said, hey... Uh, instead of paying for shipping, can I just come get it? And they, I guess he's an older guy who uh, is a toy collector. <clears throat> and he's getting rid of some of his stuff. So when she went there, um, she noticed some other stuff that he had for sale. And she brought my kid to his house. And my boy, my five-year-old, uh, picked this out for me. And... <clears throat> And I think you'll see it. I don't remember all the footage I gave Christopher to put uh, my Christmas to put up. Uh, so you might have seen it. You might not. Have. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but he sat right next to me uh, and was just as excited for me to open my gift as he was to yeah, open yeah, his. Yeah, River was very excited. <laughs> yeah. And um, so check it out. My five-year-old knows his daddy and made sure... <laughs> But he was able to get me the Super Mario Brothers. Oh, I hear something. Lunchbox, and you do hear something <laughs> because it comes complete. Oh, great! With its thermos. That's great. So again, this was from a five-year-old boy who was brought to uh, some guy's house and was able to go through his goodies, and of all the stuff that was there, he decided that I would want this the most, and. Uh, you know, it does. You know, it doesn't get any more special than yeah, this. So man, you're, you're gonna remember. You're gonna for you people for who have the babies at home, you know what we're talking about. Um, something that I will never ever forget. Yeah, that's great. So thank you to my little baby. Uh, we actually, I got a gift for his son. Yes. And he got a gift for my son. Yes. And I'll put these pictures right up now as I'm talking. But I thought that was very cool of us. Yes. <laughs> it was cool of us. Wasn't to it? do that for each other's kid. Uh, you did a quick t-shirt show off. I'll do a quick t-shirt show off. Unfortunately, uh, you might have noticed since episode uh, one original a year ago or so, uh, I've gotten a little fat. And uh, sometimes the extra large shirts don't fit. So unfortunately, this has to go back, but the seller has been nice about it, so they're sending me along a 2X, um, but this is pretty cool. This is the extra large. It don't fit, but it is the All Valley Karate Championship Cobra Kai 1984 from, of course, the Karate Kid. No mercy. Uh, unfortunately, the extra large... Um, <laughs> Rides up a little high on my belly. And so uh, 
the double X will sit a little lower hopefully and should be uh, gracing my body in a week or so, but all Valley Karate Kid Championship shirt. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Put them in a body bag! Put them in a body bag! Um... Okay. <laughs> uh, let's, uh... Let me do that real quick. Um... Wow! Got yourself some movies. Yeah. So, okay, again, all of this from my wife. That thing you do, Innocent Blood, oh. great vampire 80s, uh, I mean uh, early 90s uh, John Landis movie, Indeed. Pan's Labyrinth, the Criterion Collection. I'll probably do in-depth stuff on, uh, yeah. on a uh, you know collection video. Yeah, we'll talk about what's upcoming. Star Trek Beyond, the third uh, newer Star Trek film, Jurassic World 3D. Uh, the the Frighteners, great uh, great Peter Jackson, Michael J. Fox movie, Spider Man Homecoming 3D, Logan, the new uh, and last Wolverine movie. These are all off the Amazon. List. Pretty amazing. These were all on War for the Planet of the Apes, the third and final of the new uh, trilogy. Amazing. John Wick 2. Oh my God, amazing. So so good. These movies. My goodness. Wonder Woman, one Wonder of the best Woman. films of the year. Oh my gosh, you gotta watch it, it's great. Conjuring. Yeah. I don't like a lot of modern horror films, folks. Uh, the ones I do, I cherish, and The Conjuring, I really enjoyed. Yeah. And I loved The Conjuring, too. Of course. <laughs> and Insidious. Yes. James Wan, he, yes. He, he created all these movies, he created Saw. All these movies. Now he's directing Aquaman. Insidious is, is tremendous. I, I love actually all three yeah. of them. Uh, and four is coming out. Two, yes, it is in January. Two and three are also on my list. Yeah. But anyway, so that's that grouping. And then let's go with this. Oh. I loved the Peanuts movie that came out a couple years ago. This is the 3D version. Really, really, really great. Great feel. Um, the Warlock Collection. I'm a huge fan of Part 2, Warlock Armageddon. Saw it in theaters. I was probably the only person in there. Well, it was me and my friend Eric. But, uh, <laughs> Warlock. Anyway, this is the Warlock Collection from Scream Factory. Uh, oh, no, no. This is Vestron. This mm -hmm. is one of the Vestron, Vestron releases. releases. Which number is um, 11? And this has 1, 2, and 3. Special features. Finally, widescreen. Anyway, I'll go through with it. My God. Teen Wolf. This is Scream Factory. Teen Wolf. Amazing documentary. I can't wait to watch it. It's super crazy in length. Um, I had the crappy original Blu-ray. The picture quality wasn't that great. This is a, t a 2K, 2K scan, people, of Teen Wolf. Believe it or not. <laughs> favorite, one of my favorite 80s films. Teen Wolf 2. Special features, cleaned up, widescreen, available for the first time on Blu-ray. Bateman. Um, the original Ooh. Wolfman on Blu-ray. Now, I have the... Universal Blu-ray set, the big set that came out. But what's cool about these releases is that it has all of the Wolfman movies on here. So it's got Wolfman, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, Werewolf of London, She-Wolf of London. And that's why I wanted these sets, just to have all the... They did same, that for all of them. Yes, same with Frankenstein. Again, I've got that big set, but I wanted all these extra movies... Um, and extra features and whatnot. Uh, Beowulf 3D. Beowulf from 2007. If you haven't seen this movie, if you love action, you love Vikings, you love blood, you love sweet, badass dudes, Beowulf 3D is amazing. It was one of the most amazing 3D films I had ever seen in 2007. Couldn't believe it. And this is a Italian import release because uh, you can't get it in 3D anywhere else. Who doesn't love sweet, badass dudes? It is awesome. Uh, Slaughter High. Oh! One of my favorite 1980s uh, slasher films. Is that just was, is it that is just released? Yep, Vestron. Um, I had the uh, uh, Arrow DVD of it, uh, which was a special edition DVD, um, but this is the American special features, uh, cleaned it up, the unrated version, everything. Uh, How recently recent. did that come out? Uh, this was just, I mean, this year. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, one of my favorite films of all time, Porky's, on Blu-ray. 
and the oh, two sequels. That's nice. Porky's Two and Porky's Revenge. Oh. Love the whole Porky's trilogy. Uh, now I have them on Blu-ray. Wow. Thank you, my wife. So there's some 80s in, in this collection. Some good stuff, man. Uh, and she got me... The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, season one, which is I love absurdist, weird, out of the ordinary comedy. This is one of those shows. Um, an 80s classic that I've loved forever. Can't Buy Me Love, Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> I just, I just love the movie. 80s bringing it back, 80s feeling, 80s sitcom, 80s love, Goldberg season three. One of the best shows you can That's watch right. today. That's right, and the Goldberg season four. One of the best shows you can watch today. That's right. You're thinking, what? You don't have this? No, I don't, but now I do. Punky Brewster season one. The, the, the series has been on my list forever. Now I have Is them. the whole series out? Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Oh, really? It is. I did not know that. Yeah, you can get them individually. And, okay. And uh, finally, at least, I, at least I can check off one. <laughs> Who's the boss? Jonathan Moner. Angela. Samantha. Ah, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get it quick enough. <laughs> anyway, you've heard me talk about it. Love Who's the Boss. Shockingly, yeah. not on... DVD, the complete collection. Other than the first how does that, season. How does that happen? Blows my mind. How does blows that even mind. happen? And this thing has been out forever. Ow. Somebody explain that to me, how that is not out complete in 2017. The Muppet Show, season one. I love, love, love the Muppets. Love Jim Henson. <laughs> Talked about it before. <laughs> Muppet Show, season two. <laughs> Muppet Show, season three. For some reason, the fourth season is not rocking yet, but anyway. Available. And DuckTales, Woo! Volume 1, 1 through 27. Wonderful, beautiful, classic cartoon. you got quite a movie haul. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to the end here. All right, she got me a Stranger Things decal for the car. What's that? You'll know. She got me this awesome, awesome book, Whoa. Slash of the Titans, The Road to Freddy vs. Jason. And this book is basically the making, the trials and tribulations of 10 to 15 years of trying to get Freddy vs. Jason off the ground. I can't wait to read this book. I know a lot of the history because I'm a huge Freddy and Jason fan. I grew up with Fangoria. I know... When they started talking about a Freddy vs. Jason, which was in 1987. But anyway, so I can't wait to pour over this book. Whoa. Uh, didn't really even know too much about it, so I was super excited when I opened this. This is very cool. Totally tubular 80s toys. From Mark Belomo. This has been on my list forever. This, this guy is a great... I, I have his um, Star Wars uh, action figure guide. Uh, this guy's a huge 80s head. He shows up on... Folks, let me just say, if you are a toy lover, if you love the 80s, if you want that nostalgia, vintage, magical feeling, watch Netflix's The Toys That Made Us. This show is fantastic. And Mark is on the show. Should have been us. Uh, whatever. You really need to watch it because it is... They go into... They talk to the makers of the toys, how the toys were created, why the toys were created, how some of the silliest ideas became the toys. Like, it is just amazing. That's a good book. I don't know if you've seen it in my house, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I read this actually at my friend Bobby's. Yeah. Bobby! But, uh, so... Yeah, my kid has that in his room right now. I'm <clears> glad <throat> that I finally have this in my collection. Look at this. I know. Oh, I know. If that... Wow. That's nice. If that poster ever saw the light of day... I made my own poster of that. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Um, and that... And that's... Pretty much it. I mean, I got, right. like, I got socks. You know, I got some new running shoes from her. <coughs> that was amazing. Like, 
I can't even describe it. It's like a for the house. It's this, this amazing, warm, Schnuggie? comforting coat. I don't even know what it is, but it's amazing. I wear it all the time. Uh, but I mean, since I got it, and um, so yeah, that I mean, so that was since I got it. Yeah, I really. I mean, I've been wearing it. I only took it off because of the show. Well, don't don't. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Well done. To all my friends, well thank done. you, my wife, thank you, River. It was it was an amazing, amazing Christmas. Uh, yeah, let's keep it going. On my end, I will bring it home, as they say. Uh, ooh, ooh. little little <laughs> obs little obscure wrestling items I love to 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 find. But again, these are things that. I guess if I just had a ton of PayPal money, I would just buy these little things. But these are things that I see and go, "Ooh, that's nice," and then I look for something else. Uh, these are these are. I love getting things like this because it's not stuff I would usually buy myself. This is a uh, 1991 uh, Hulk Hogan. Uh, I believe this is a 35 millimeter camera. So this is an actual camera that takes film. Um, that of, and batteries, which of course no longer uh, works or is in existence. But this is our old camera, boys and girls. This is a uh, this is a camera that you would load film into and take a picture, and you couldn't see what it looked like until you got them developed. Yeah, I don't think this one had the rolly thing. No. Mm -hmm. um, got your flash. That's uh, awesome. Got your little. But this is from Remco. So this is uh, if you guys are watching my stuff, you know that Remco. Uh, made uh, AWA wrestling figures back in 1985, and they uh, also produced this pretty awesome Hulk Hogan 35 millimeter camera. That's pretty cool. That I now proudly will display in my collection room, which we will talk about in a minute. Don't let me forget. Uh, moving along, everybody knows how much I. Absolutely adore the television show Dallas, and every year I get something from the show. This, uh, I never had any clue this existed. So basically this is a, it says the complete Ewing family saga, including South Fork Ranch Ewing Oil and the Barnes Ewing Feud. 1860 to 1985 by Laura Van Warmer and an introduction by Leonard Katzman who was the uh, writer, or producer, or director of Dallas. I just kind of took a quick look through this. It's basically, I, I don't know what to call it. I mean, you're a, you're a movie guy. Like, what is this? Yeah, this it's, is, it's, it's the, it just looks like the, it's like, um, they, I mean, they do it today. They still do it. They, it's, it's basically, mm, making of the book I like making of, of the particular whatever TV show yeah. or or movies or whatever but it's like it's a history it's yeah. a it's a guide of the yeah. fan, fantasy of the show but like, they do it in character so there, yeah, yeah there's no behind they the still scenes do it stuff today. here yeah they still do it they write about this as if they're writing about That's awesome. the characters so i just love the way that this cover looks and again if i could meet we just met uh, Charlene Tilton, Lucy Ewing from the show. Um, if I could get this back to her, and ha if I could meet her again or anybody else from the show, I would I would have them sign this. And I think that they would they, they would be you know amazed by it themselves because I've never seen this. I don't I didn't know this existed until I opened it. And again, legitimate excitement for this. Now this I knew I existed, and it's something that I always wanted. Back in oh my goodness, there's a little liquid in there. <laughs> we might we might have a sample in here on the air. Um, back in oh I'd say boy this is probably this is probably a mid '80s product. Yeah, it's aged four years. No, it's got recycling on it. I don't know when this came out, and I don't I don't see a year on it. It's not modern. Um, basically, J.R. Ewing, Larry Hagman. Uh, if you watch the show, was a, you know, his drink of choice on the show was bourbon, uh, whiskey. And so to capitalize off of that, 
they, they produced, and I don't even know the company, uh, bottled by Strong Spirits, Bardstown, Kentucky, for South Fork Bottling Company, Dallas, Texas, is the J.R. Ewing Bourbon. Uh, Private Reserve J.R. Ewing Bourbon. This was just a product, uh, you know, just a um, capitalization on the on the pop popularity of the of Time. the show. Uh, tie into the show, Larry Hagman. Uh, I don't know what he had to do with it. I don't know how you know, but this is Larry Hagman, J.R. Ewing's Private Reserve, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, an empty bottle, which will just display beautifully. Yeah. And and when I when I opened it, there's some there's a drop in there. You dare me? Oh, it's a you dare me? Little bit of a. A little bit of the past going in your belly, right? You ready for this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm doing it. I don't know. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was a parasite. Um, it was bourbon-y. Um, I hope the guy that I bought this from didn't drink bourbon out of the bottle. But I just drank his last swallow. <laughs> Kenny Rogers fans out there. That was a... Little Dallas, uh, representing Dallas for Christmas 2017. Mm. <laughs> All right. I'm saving what I think you will appreciate most for last. Uh, got a couple of neato little little thingies. Uh, something that I didn't know existed. <laughs> That's sweet. The McDonald's 1982 coloring calendar. Uh, completely uncolored. Yeah, where the where so, these come from? Yeah, so basically, uh, I'm assuming just some kind of McDonald's promo, uh, but it's a, a coloring catalog, a coloring calendar, and every month is a different country, and you can put some stickers out and and all that fun stuff. So that's great. Oh uh, my gosh, it hasn't been used at all. Hasn't been used at all. Hasn't been colored in, uh, and it's just a it's just an awesome item and to go along with it is the 1981 <laughs> McDonald's coloring calendar that's great uh, also unused and this is an animal themed one so you get to color like different animals and I haven't gone through this but there were coupons and it looks like it does look like some of the coupons were taken out but for example in January 1981 uh, you could get a free regular size soft drink juice milk or hot chocolate with any purchase wow. and it was good all day and then I got a fun little, uh, fun little Gremlins 2 uh, sticker slash coloring book. Uh, actually, just sticker book, not slash coloring. But the good thing about this, it's oh, great. also that's great. Also That's awesome. unused. See, I loved the the st uh, movie slash TV sticker books. Yeah. Uh, I have a few. I collected them. I definitely had them growing up. Unused. Um, that's great. Unopened. Uh, originally from a store called CW slash CP for $1.49. Awesome. No idea. But those Great. are two, uh, three cool little items that I got. And again, yes, we know it was 1990. But those little things like that, that that's what makes my Christmas is so special, special because I will always get something that is just so like obscure that you you never would have owned it if somebody didn't find it for you and buy it like those mcdonald's calendars where would i have ever found those i mean i guess if i'd found them at a flea market but i'd probably pass them by because they'd probably be in a big box of other you know paper products and magazines yeah. okay this um this i i really found to be um special oh, so sweet. so this is a uh, I believe unpunched, unused. It might have been just folded back together, but I don't think so because it, it looks pretty stiff. Uh, this is a Back to the Future, the cartoon. Yeah. Um, McDonald's Happy Meal uh, box. So in, uh, what, 87 or so? No. This this would probably be uh, 90, 91. Really? Yeah. Okay. The, the cartoon was after part two. Part two okay. Was, Oh yeah, watch back to the yeah. So this is the cartoon uh, promotion. So ninety, ninety one, ninety two um, gained some popularity. I'm I'm sure the dates on the bottom, but I don't want to open it up. But 
Um, something McDonald's, uh, Back to the Future, the cartoon Happy Meal promotion. Now, you know that if they were doing this promotion, there had to have been some toys. Oh, of course, I had those. Well, so do I. From, from this. Here they are. That's great. So we've got all four of the McDonald's Back to the Future uh, Happy Meal oh, toys. That's awesome. Uh, so this will be set up in pro I will I will probably break the seal on this and I will probably put it together and display it with the and, and the two that are obviously most um, memorable is the uh, Doc Brown in the DeLorean. I don't know what they you know they're, they're so yeah, still great. doing all right there and uh, Marty's our right. boy Marty. And then a couple of the other characters, I haven't seen the show in a very long time, so I couldn't tell you who these guys well, are. Jules but... and Vern, his, his kids. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the Marty McFly uh, his hoverboard. on his hoverboard. So, they uh, came as a whole set. And again, <coughs> really, um, really blew me away when I opened it because... I kind of didn't know that they existed. I mean, I... I, I definitely had them. I'm sure I experienced them in 1991 or two, but by then I wasn't interested in them. And now I have them. So that, uh, that about does it, as they say. Um, yeah, that was my Christmas. I got, uh, oh, what else? Oh, I got, you know, stocking stuffers, um... Uh, we I always get food for stocking stuffers because you eat a lot of candy. Yeah, I, I get I, you know I'm not much of a candy person, so I get like um, uh, cheddar bacon Cheetos or cheddar bacon Cheez Its. I got uh, sunflower seeds. You know uh, your your standard your standard uh, stocking fare. So wow. Whew. That what was a haul. And when I came here tonight, I said, well, this is probably going to be a shorter episode. <laughs> Silly. Gus not. You did all right. I did all right. Yeah. This, uh, this was all right. This it was a good was. old, this was a good old 80s Christmas. Uh, what would you guys get? Tell us. Leave in the yeah. comments. You know, yeah. we love talking to you. Uh, any of you guys have an 80s Christmas? Uh, two vloggers more. I don't, I know they did their Christmas uh, morning or Christmas day. I, did, I don't know if. If they showed gifts off uh, or not, but uh, anyway, what did what did y'all get? Uh, Big Beefcake Gaming. I saw what you got and left some pretty, you know, left a comment for you. So um, while we gather up all this stuff, why don't we take a commercial and then we'll come back and we'll tell them what's coming up in 2018 for the New That's 80s right. Revolution. All right, and then we'll get the heck out of here. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. <gasps> Freshest ice cream. Corvette. Made fresh in your Carvel store daily, folks. Corvette. Premium quality fresh ice cream. Corvette. Sure it costs more, you know that. Corvette. Deluxe Sunday dinner, yeah. Corvette. And on Wednesday, it's buy one, get one free at your participating Carvel store. Yeah. Catch Lucky! He's got lucky charms! They're magically delicious! Always have to be Lucky Charms, the crunchy old cereal with a rainbow of marshmallow surprises. Pink hearts, yellow moons, orange stars, green clovers, and blue diamonds. Part of this good nutritious breakfast. Oh, they're coming. I'll make a snowmobile and zoom away. Oh. Frosted Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. Oh. Oh. The Christ, the, the the Christmas spirit, the, the, the it, it's left. Where, where where did it go? Well, it it it's it is leaking out of us. <laughs> it's as, back in the ether. As we wrap up this very special Christmas Revolution Part Two episode, we say goodbye to December. We say goodbye to Christmas. Uh, we say goodbye to 2018. 2017. We say goodbye to 2017. <laughs> and we say hello. To it's that whiskey that I drank. <laughs> it was that, very that, strong. That little, very strong. Yeah, it was powerful stuff. Brewed in the 1800s. Um, yeah, so we are here in another one of your 
rooms. This is fantastic, by the way. Um, you know, to kind of to kind of talk about uh, where we've been and where we're going. Yeah. So coming up in the next uh, weeks, uh, I'd say. Oh yeah, yeah. It's actually, I believe, it's like sixteen days. Sixteen days away, boys and girls. Saturday, January thirteenth. 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We will we will be probably sitting right here. Um, we're definitely, we're, we're going to be doing this at Chris's house because his internet. The wireless is, is the Wi-Fi is, is Like strong. business class. So very strong. Yeah. We will be here with you for something that I am very excited about. A live <laughs> Q&A with all of our fans and followers of the New 80s Revolution. Once again, you've heard us talk about it. Come on, get on, jump on your desktops. You you might have uh, gotten a, a notice for it because I did set up uh, a reserved time. Really? So that's, yeah. Very, very cool. Um, um, so you do all this stuff and I just kind of sit back and collect the paychecks. <laughs> uh, so... It's going to be interesting. This is I've never done a live show before. I did we I guess we did do one for Gourmet Scum Radio, but that was a whole that was a to do. Um, and we're doing this live very differently. Uh, so I'm hoping that it's all going to work out fine. Um, expect some glitches, I assume. What I what I would say just so you guys know is <laughs> if something starts going wrong, during the live show, um, I would say keep asking questions. Keep typing in your questions um, because even if it doesn't go live or, or it stops going live, we will still read the questions and we'll still keep a camera going and we'll still answer the questions. Oh, yeah. It'll just become a non-live show, and it'll be up on YouTube for you guys to watch. Anyway. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. To it. Yeah, so don't don't bail on us if if it if it something goes wrong. We're going to be here for a couple of hours, I assume, oh, because yeah. that's how we do things. So come early, come late, but we will be here for you know for a couple hours. I could see us going until like eleven o'clock. So uh, we'll be here. Uh, so get on here, get on, come hang out with us. Uh, ask us anything you want. Let's talk. Uh, some people have already left some questions in the comments that we'll jot down and, and answer if you don't come on live. But you know, I'm inviting everybody. Everybody, get over here and let's let's do this Q and A and let's let's just really have fun with it. Yeah, so that's coming up Saturday, January thirteenth, eight thirty p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Now, something that I know you want to do some things. I'm going to do. So obviously, the new '80s Revolution team isn't going anywhere. We've got some exciting episodes planned for 2018. Um, we'd like some ideas from you as well. And this wasn't something that I talked with you about, but um, what do you want to see us do? I mean, we've got some ideas going for, we're going to do a food special coming up where we're going to cook and eat and have a whole bunch of fun. We've got certainly other 80s topics to talk about. Yeah, um, and the food is 80s related. Uh, we're going to, you know, it's... it's yeah, we're not just going to do a cooking show. No, no, it's foods that we ate in the 80s. You get to see us as 40-year-olds <laughs> try to eat those foods now. Not try. Well, we will, but... I'm going to eat them. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, digestional uh, pain be damned. We'll, uh, we'll do it for, for you, for you fans. Uh, and it'll probably be delicious. Big Macs, filet of fish <laughs> <Ugh>, The McRibs. <laughs> McNuggets, um, for sure. Uh, that's just a little bit of a, but there will be a plethora, and I believe Mr. Tansky will be back for yeah, that. Yeah, Chris one as Tansky well. will be joining us for that. Um, He'll probably join us for a couple. Yeah, of episodes, absolutely. But uh, you know, if you guys have if you guys have topics, if you want us to do uh, to do just sort of a, a retrospective on on something that meant a lot to you in the '80s, I'm pretty sure it meant a lot to us, or we can make it mean a lot to us. So, <laughs> give us some ideas of some stuff that you want to see going forward. Yeah, um, we're gonna do '80s music. We're going to do 80s toys. That's something that I, I get a lot of, is like, when are you going to talk about toys? <laughs> I think we've been talking yeah. about toys since we started. We certainly have, but I think like a whole devoted yeah, episode of, of toys. And we'll get to it, and it won't be just one. That's just a big thing. We so love we toys. want to do it right. 
you know, you know that could be that could be that could be our whole show. We will be se- we'll do several things about toys yeah. because it was and is such a huge part of who we are. So. I, it is the eighties. <laughs> Uh, so that will be happening. Fashion. Fashion, yeah. food, music, of course, toys over and over again. Board we, games. Board games. We're going to have a, a an 80, New 80s Revolution play-along where you're just going to hang out with us. We're going to play some old classic board games, That'll maybe Twister. Um, we'll get Tansky involved <laughs> in that as well. Yeah, he's got a lot of good games, and he, too. And he, uh, apparently, he shouldn't sit with his arms folded. <laughs> yes, yes, I read that. Uh, also, when we created the set in my basement. It's a great set. Uh, it is a great set. But it destroyed <laughs> my collection room. Uh, I basically put everything... Uh, you don't even want to see yeah, it. If it's, you turn the camera around, oh, it's like a, oh, a tornado. Oh, right? <laughs> it, 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 it makes me sad every single day. So, I started the great uh, 2018 Nerd Cave renovation several weeks ago, and I am nowhere near finished. But I will be finished, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and I will do a brand new 2018 toy room slash nerd cave tour for you guys. I'd like you to be a part of that because... Well, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to help you put it back together. Yes, you, well, you helped me destroy it. So I would like you to, yes, but I but I want you to be there for, you know, I could easily just go around with a camera and, and just show stuff and walk by it, but I would like you to be behind the camera. I want to be able to be talking, and, and I want to take my time with it. I want you to see some of the stuff that you might not have seen uh, because it's all been in a big pile. So uh, that's coming, a brand new toy room tour from me, lots of new stuff to show you. We're going to have a whole new setup down there, brand new shelves. I'm getting rid of all the old bookshelves, and I am... Um, bringing in newer shelves that give me a little bit more room on top to display some bigger items. Um, so that's coming. And we're just going to go do stuff. Like we're going to, any toy show that we hit up, conventions are coming back around. Um, Chiller uh, has not, uh, Chiller for April has not announced any guests yet, but we will be there, I, I would assume, or I hope. Um, I hope so. RetroCon 2018 has already announced uh, guest, uh, the voice of Jem, yeah, that's cool. is going to be at RetroCon. Uh, we will be at RetroCon. And before you talk about some of your unboxing, I know you're going to do some DVD stuff. You, you know, we... yeah, I, th- you know, I, th- I think we've talked about it before. Is that the both of us just to keep, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of you've read it, uh, I've read it. Uh, people wish we were a little more active, you yeah. know, but and I've and I've told people that. We both have lives uh, outside of this, and sometimes it's a little tough to uh, connect those lives. Um, so, but we try, man. We really, you know, we, we put a lot of love and passion and effort into what we do when we do it. Um, but I think people want some more frequency. Okay. And this is a way to have a little more frequency. Yeah. Give them a little more bang for their... No but, but <laughs> their viewing pleasure, their subscription yeah, to us. Their love. Man. Yes. Uh, so you'll get your wrestling videos. You'll get your collection videos, reviews, whatnot, in addition to unboxing videos, collection show-off videos. Uh, so we'll try to do separate stuff as well that we'll throw on the channel. Yeah. And could be peppered in between the big shows. Yeah. If I haven't, you know, I haven't really gone to any uh, thrift stores um, since we started doing this, really. I, I just haven't gone. But if I do go, and I will go back, if I do pick something up in the yeah, wild, just... I will throw it up on a quick, uh, you know, five or ten minute video just to show you guys what we picked up. Again, just to keep this thing active. Yes. Uh, I, I, ideally, I mean, I'd like to do a video, you know, a week maybe. But uh, who knows? I don't know if that can happen. But, um, yeah, so the wrestling video, the wrestling figure reviews, I did leave off uh, uh, the AWA Remco's. I did Series 1 for you guys and then just kind of left it while we got started. That's going to come back as soon as I get the toy room back up and running. I will sit down there and I will go through those wrestling figures that you guys love. Um, but we, we mentioned it earlier, and we're going to mention it again, and, and hopefully you guys are still with us. Um, we have found an artist who is going to uh, basically uh, create us 
in cartoon form and give us full reign over the artwork yeah. for us to do copyright basically for us to do what we want and um, we're certainly going to add it to the to the show to the intro yeah. um, but I want to do so much more with this uh, we, we won't tell you about the design it is awesome I think we did already so did we tell them we might have talked a little bit about it um, either way it's I mean because I just did a doodle and a sketch that I uh, of what I thought the logo should be, the new one, and this person is going <laughs> to blow that away, you know what I mean? So we really have no idea what it's going to look like. I know this person's art, I know what he is capable of, I think it's going to be awesome, <laughs> and it's going to be very cool to see on anything we want to put it on. Anything we want to put it on and anything you guys would be interested in putting it on. Now, you know, we're doing this for fun, but we're paying to have this artwork created. And I want to, first of all, I want to put it on a t-shirt so yep. that I have, <coughs> that I have my face on a t-shirt. As a cartoon. As, as a, a Saturday cartoon. morning cartoon. Insane. I want to buy one for my kids. <laughs> I want, you know, I, I want it on a, on a hoodie. But, so, you know, if, if we're going to make t-shirts available to you guys, you will be able to purchase the new 80s Revolution t-shirts featuring your two favorite 80s connoisseurs. Stickers. Stickers. Buttons. Posters. I was even thinking we'll do some really special kind of cool throwback nostalgia type. Uh, we'll, we could be on the front cover of a TV guide. Oh. You know, like we can really like have some fun with this and uh <laughs> mesh mesh backed hats maybe. Yeah we'll man. Some throwback hats. Um I told you before, you know, you know, fun some bumper stickers, beer koozies. Oh yeah, uh uh I thought it would be cool once we get a certain collection of the episodes together to make uh DVD sets. DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS sets to sell um, a collection of, say, like, you know, the first five episodes on... Season one. Yeah, yeah, season one on Blu-ray. We will make it worth your while, so we'll give you, like, some extra footage. Bloopers. We'll bloopers. We'll do some, like, extra little things that you won't see on the channel, but they'll be on the disc, so it'll be worth it for you. Cool artwork, and if we do, like, a VHS version, we can have the VHS box with a VHS... And a Blu-ray, like, combined, yep. you know, uh, just to make it fun and special. And we want to, you know, we'll, we'll personalize it the best way we can for those who purchase it. Um, we've always wanted to bring you a part of this because, again, without you guys, we would kind of just hang out and talk about this. We wouldn't we wouldn't be sitting in front of a camera doing it. So, um, you know, if it, when we when we get to that point where we're, where we're releasing, you know, Basically, we're capping off season one of the New 80s Revolution right now, and soon, uh, hopefully, um, we'll, we'll give you more information about how to get us on Blu-ray, DVD, and more importantly, VHS. But if you do order something like that, of course, we'll personalize it to you. Um, yeah. And really, like, the capital that, we're try that we'll raise from this stuff is paying for the show. It really is. Like... We'll be going to conventions, you know, we'll be traveling, we'll be doing, we'll be going to you, possibly, we'll be visiting you to see your collections. Yes. Uh, we'll have special guests on the show. And, and we'll put it back into the show right. item-wise as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, none of this is, you know, <coughs> if we, trust us, if we got some extra cash floating around, we're probably going and buying something <laughs> for the show, so... Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to announce that to you guys. I, I mean, I would love, I would, I personally would love a copy of the first five episodes or first whatever we've done this year, six episodes, five, five episodes this is of the, the fifth show. Fifth episode. Fifth episode. I would personally love a VHS copy of the first <laughs> five episodes of our show. Um, and, and we know that some of you would love that as well. And we're not going to gouge people. You know, we don't like the gougers. So whatever we pay for the item, we'll probably, you know, put a slight, you know, markup on it. Um, and then we'll make it available to you. So you're not going to be paying a lot of money for this fun stuff. But anyway, that's coming, and I can't wait to make official announcements on that. I've, I've, I've only hinted to this in the past, 
And I will only continue to hint to it in the past because I've been asked not to talk about it. But there is still a very, <laughs> there is still a very strong possibility that, uh, well, uh, me and the New 80s Revolution concept and my collection will be made viewable on some <laughs> particular cable station. <laughs> uh, uh, there's some stuff going on. I might, we, this might go big, big time. I don't know. Forget about that for now, but a uh, little spoiler, little, little, I don't know. I'm not allowed to talk about it. But it's still alive. I, I mentioned it a few months ago. It's still alive. Um, it's still alive for possibly February or March, um, which you will be a part of, of course. I'd like you, of course, to be there with me. But um, anyway, so that's all coming up. When you find out, you know, this will all make sense. But uh, we've had a ton of fun this year. This has been... Yes. Amazing! This yeah, has man. been a great time. Six months, and this all started <laughs> because I was making some toy videos in my basement, and you Liked watched it. them <laughs> and sent me. You know, you you we like we told the story before. You wanted to team up on a project. Um, for whatever reason, the project didn't happen, and I said, "Let's do this," and it's we've it's gone uh, you know to the moon uh, since. So. Um, we're having a blast. 652 of you are subscribed. Yeah. 653. Um, I like Which it like awesome. that. I like it like so that. So awesome. I, 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 you know, we're going to hit 1,000 subscribers. Oh, of course. Heck yeah. Um, the sky's the limit, The sky's folks. the limit, guys. Hang out with us, our loyal fans. I, I love talking to you. We love interacting with you. We're going to do it again on January 13th in the live Q&A. And we are just going to... You are going to... You, we are going to allow the new '80s revolution to infect you. You will wear us on your bodies. You will, you will have us in your DVD player. You will wear us on your heads as headbands. You yeah. will put us on your feet. We will be everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and as we get going, 2018, Chris and I will talk about how we can bring the show to you, how we can bring this camera to your collection, and showcase you. On an episode? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, there's really no reason why it can't happen. You know, it's just coordinating the time and and, and, and we'll just do it. We're going to uh, do it. We just, we really need to broaden the show and, and, and uh, make it more accessible to people and, and give you a little more, you know, yeah. a little, little more fun. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's not not that it's not fun with looking at two dudes sitting <laughs> at a, you know, beautiful uh, vintage set or what have you. But uh, I think you also appreciate when we uh, go to a clip or go to a footage, you know, go to this or go to that. I, I think it's yeah. it breaks up the monotony a little bit and it shows you a little more of what we do as a team. People and, liked the Toys R Us episode. Yeah, man. Um, you know, we've always tried to splice in something, whether it was RetroCon... Uh, and now, we've got a whole year together to really bring them something crazy, special, amp up what we, you know, are already doing it. I think we, we kind of got together unexpectedly. We came up with the idea to do this unexpectedly. We, we didn't rush through the set, but we kind of like, we worked with what we were dealt with, with what we had. We played the, we played the hand that we had in, in my room. We made it into the set that you guys see, the backdrop that you see on every episode. But that all went together with, like, minimal effort, I think. We, did, we didn't put a lot, you know. Now we got a whole... We, we've, we're five episodes in. We're, we're capping off season one here of the New 80s Revolution. And now, going forward, we're really going to get to work here. <laughs> you know, now we're really going to start getting to work. And... Um, you know, we're, we're just going to bring it to you, and you guys are going to have a blast, and we're going to have a blast doing it. This is one of the funnest things I've ever done, so... Yeah, I, I love it. I, All right. I think it's a it's a real blessing. It is a blessing! The last six months have, have been really, really special for me. They so. have been. So, uh, yeah, I hope it's been special for you as well. I think it has. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Yes. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We will see you in 2018... Happy New Year, Happy folks! New if you're Year. watching us on <laughs> you will, New Year's, yeah, if you're, yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. This is probably going up closer to New Year's. Yes, so happy New Year's. We will see you all in 2018. We ain't going anywhere. It has only just begun that's here right. on the New 80s Revolution. We will see you soon.